down. Okay, Nick Swan now. Put the key down. 13th in the championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be... Oh, when, when have we got leads? Now then, people, and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. I hope you are all doing well, um, as well as you can be anyway, because obviously yesterday um, didn't go Leeds United's way. There is now um, potentially a 12-point gap between us and Ipswich. Um, Daniel Farker got selection uh, decisions all wrong. Um and the substitutions came maybe too late, which is a bit of a running theme at the minute, uh, and we will get into that. And of course, the uh, the name on everyone's lips. We're going to, of course, talk about Patrick Bamford. Uh, the question in the title does say, um, is Bamford finished? Um, someone was asking me earlier on, where would he go? And I went, I just hope the club that was after Cooper in Saudi comes in for Bamford, maybe. You don't know. If they're willing to take Coops, they might take Bamford off our hands. Um, Listen, a lot of you were asking as well where Kate was at because I know obviously Kate's Bamford's biggest fan. Um, I got so many messages saying Kate must be here, right? Um, but yeah, she's. I tried. I did try. Um, but yeah, she she did get back to me basically and said that yeah she could just not miss it and Kate is with <laughs> us, of course. So Kate, <laughs> it's been a while. We've had so many people. Asking about you after yesterday as well. So many people saying we must get you on. So we're going to start with you. We have to give the people what they want, ultimately. And they want a UK. So come on, uh, talk to us. Talk to do us. I really have feeling? to go first? Yes, you do. Talk to me about Bamford. <laughs> Talk to it's me about Bamford. It's where we're going to save it till the end, that, that, that joke. <laughs> oh, God. Right, what can I, I don't, see, I don't know where to start now. What, I, I, look, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think I need time to process it. At the end of the day, what I will say is I told you so. Do you know what I mean? All the yeah, yeah. Like nah, that, yeah. I told you so. The guys are busted flush. It was self before side yesterday, Joe, and um, it wasn't side before self. Cree wanted the ball. Cree then... I, I believe um, asked um, Pascal Stroit to kind of intervene, and he was too weak to uh, to, to override Bamford, and it all mm. went itself as we all I expect ex expected it to. When I when I saw him, you know, step up, I just knew it. I just knew it. And mm. um, for me, busted flush yeah. needs to go. I don't want to see him playing for Leeds again. I can't bear it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and listen, I hear it. Like I, everyone knows, I'm a I'm an old guard apologist, if you like. Um, but but Bamford, uh, I did say maybe you know, um, time was up. I, I had said that in earlier streams that maybe it'd be best if he went elsewhere. However, as a fan, I was actually impressed with his performances off the bench. Um, I I, I thought to be honest, I praised him for winning the penalty as well yesterday. I thought he won it really well. People said, oh, someone said to me, oh, you don't win penalties, you get them awarded or something. I was like, no, there's an art to winning a penalty. That's crazy. Uh, he waits for the challenge to come in from Pierce, and it was a stonewall. Anyway, that's by the by. But ultimately, like everyone's told me, and I'll hold my hands up for the past two seasons, a striker's um, judged by his goals. And um, I don't think it's crazy to say if Bamford scores, we win the game 1-0. That's facts. Yeah. I don't think Stoke go up the other end and score a goal. Nah, I, I, honestly, I don't believe it, Andrea. I mm. think one goal wins it. We'll get yeah, into that. I don't that know, anyway, mate. Honestly, I don't nah, know. Nah, honestly, no. Nah, I think, I think. But anyway, we'll we'll get into that bit. But let's. Look, we're gonna have to start yeah. with Bamford. That's what everyone needs <laughs> for. Um, yeah. Ultimately, there's a level of arrogance to the man. I genuinely believe that. I don't know him personally, but for me, it fell back into last season and the seniority complex because ultimately. Strauch was not, I wouldn't say afraid, but sort of like felt, it felt to me, we don't know what's gone on. We don't know what's gone on. I, and I, I don't think, know. Joe, with, with what you're saying with Strauch, mm. I just think there's yeah. a, there's an extra dynamic that we haven't considered here is that you, like you cannot stand on the pitch and 
start arguing about who's going to take the penalty because it I looks disagree. awful. I disagree. But if, if they start having a row on the pitch, everyone's like, what's going on at Leeds? It's a joke. It's Bam- Bamford should Agreed. never have taken it and, and Correct, said, yeah. it's mine, it's mine. When Chris Antio Somerville went to pick the ball up, he's the man in form. He's yeah. the one who you, you yeah. thought would back to put that in the back of the net. Bamford's got to let him have it. I'm not saying it's yeah. Bamford's. I'm not saying Bamford's not at fault here. I'm just saying that as a captain, Pascal can only do so much. He can't can I, start trying to pull I, the ball out of his hands because it makes but us he look... Should've. Like a shit show, I, I and that's fine. But but Chelsea last week, Cole Palmer, who's just walked in at Chelsea, who just walked in from Manchester City, said to Raheem Sterling, <laughs> "Not a chance." And Enzo Fernandez walked over and also got involved and went, "No, Raheem, you're not having it." And guess what? Cole Palmer scored. I'm going to stop doing that because I don't. I'm not feeling great <laughs> right now. But there is another, <laughs> there is another, there is another like that. There is, there is another angle. Yeah, to it does it, it all. Well. Man. It does it all. I think. Go on, go on, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> From a footballer perspective and from a manager perspective, because everyone's saying that, you know, Fargus should have got involved. Absolutely yeah. should yeah. not have gone involved. People should have said Stroke got involved. Absolutely should not have got involved. As soon as that ball is picked up by somebody, whether you like it or not, you don't do anything to distract them from taking that penalty. If you start having an argument about the ball, confidence takes a hit. If Somerville misses, then it's a much bigger argument. We look crap on the pitch. We're arguing with ourselves <clears throat> and we've missed the penalty. The fact that Pamford missed it, doesn't change what could have happened as well if, if Somerville had taken it. If I'm a manager and the penalty taker's gone off the park and someone picks the ball up, it's on him now. It's on him. Leave it. Nah, Leave it. Nah, nah. You, so would you not have preferred Strout to say get off? I think it, I, I think Strout maybe said it to him, but once there's a you, once it's like no, I'm taking it. You're like fine, fine. You have then you have to say fine. You can't. You just can't. I mean, if you're a player about to take a kick and you have the confidence to pick the ball up, which Bamford continually. Keeps backing yeah, himself. It's misplaced, and man. It's misplaced. I agree. Yeah, yeah, it is misplaced. I a ho- he he shouldn't on. have picked it up in the first place. No, he shouldn't. No. Should he? What I was going to say was, he has a lot of confidence in himself, as most strikers do. There's a level of ego to being a striker because it's about scoring goals. He's got confidence he in that, himself, Jer. Patrick Bamford. He does, the fact that he's putting himself in those positions means he, he thinks that he'll score, right? Or he, he thinks... He'll, Anyway, we're getting off topic. That's, I think that's he not does the point think he scored, yeah. I think he was the hero. Guys. That's why he did it. Yeah, I yeah, I know. <sighs> Everyone's interrupted me now. And that's not the point that I was trying to make. No, go on, sorry. You've all liked one, one part of this. But you um, got him back, aren't you, Jer? <laughs> just you. <laughs> you. Hey, I'm trying to make a point. Once he picks the ball up, whether you like it or not, you cannot start an argument with him. And if Stroker said, give it to Creed, and he went, no, you've got to leave it. And now, it's, now all of it, all of it is on Bamford's shoulders. If he missed, the entire situation is on him. Where if you go the other direction, you start pointing the fingers at managers getting involved in arguing. You start seeing it on Sky Sports and other programs going, oh, look, it leads to fighting with each other. It's not right in the camp. It's You just can't have that. But so, if he scored, I couldn't give a shit. And he would have. Yeah, but you don't know that. He you don't know that. Joe, the you argument know is that, no, he, okay, okay. that most likely he would have scored if... Somerville, if he was the per- first person to pick the ball up. But if there had been an argument over it, he'd have, in the back of his head, he's like, oh, I've got to score now because Strap yeah, exactly. just argued, the, argued the toss for yeah. me to get this. And now there's Correct. even more pressure on it. And it... That's why you don't do it. That's why the, you the, don't do it. The point, is that, the point is that... I get it, but... The point is that Pirro is the penalty taker. And yeah. this is what Farka said. And when he comes off the pitch, there needs to be... Uh, uh, somebody who it defaults back to rather than it being, oh, who's going to take this? Closest person exactly. to it was Bamford. Oh, I'm just going to pick it up. I won it. I'm going to I'm going to take it, whatever. It needs to be, okay, when Perot's not on the pitch, who's our penalty taker? And and yeah. if someone had volunteered before that and said, it's Somerville or who else? Jorginho, I would have preferred taking it. Anyone, yeah. I would have preferred mm-hmm. taking it than Bamford because as soon as it happened, I was like... Oh, Can God, it... it's Bamford taking The, the fact that he thought he was the heir apparent penalty taker after Pirro is an yes. absolute yeah. joke. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. I agree with that. What, what I just, say, um, just and, before you go, yeah, Andrea, go on, I just, yeah, I just want to like clear something up for the chat because it's, um, it's frustrating a little bit. Um, a lot of these players that we're not criticising have credit in the bank and have scored goals this season. I don't continuously fucking miss penalties. Don't have a 50% hit rate in penalties. Don't have the worst record of any penalty taker across England's yeah. five leagues for the last 
three penalties or whatever it is. Also, don't have recent penalty misses in big mm. moments against Leicester and Newcastle to call upon. So anybody that's saying, well, why aren't you saying this about this player missing? And why aren't you saying this about... Because it's Patrick Bamford. And the guy should have known. Do you know what? Nah, this isn't this isn't the time. The guy took it upon himself because he wanted the glory. Mm -hmm. I don't, in my opinion, even the way he struck the penalty, I'm like, what? You, mm. What do you think you're doing? You're going top ins. Who do you think? Like, come on. Just, it, it, it wasn't even. It wasn't even yeah. in the top corner. It was saying. central. And it, and every, and it, every it became arrogant. It became. It was arrogant yesterday. It was arrogance. And I'm just frustrated to think that some people think we there's some sort of agenda going on. There's some sort of thing. It's not. This is. This is now the end of the line for me, and I and I like him, but he, he, no man, he, he should have known. Like everyone knew, even if you look at the reactions, right? I'm watching the game. Rodon is in perfect line. He goes, Whoop. someone's done a tweet of Dan James, who's already got his hands yeah. on his knees looking down, because he knows <laughs> they all Go know. Yeah, they all knew. They all fucking knew. So to sit here now and say, oh. Well, what about the 11... Yeah, right. Ju can I just... Justin, I love you, mate, and I know you love Bamford, but I hear what you're saying about the 11 players. We are going to get into that. Yep, but ultimately, that, yeah. Bamford had the opportunity to rectify that performance. We had a get-out-of-jail-free card, right? That's we, what it was. We come away... Yeah, we That's come away saying... Yeah. We have played shit, and we've got three points. Happy days. But no, the, he, he took that... Um, took that pressure, and that's what he's paid for. But at the end of the day, he he he, he got found wanting, and it's not the first time, it's not the yeah. second time, it's the fucking third time now mm -hmm. in a space of six months. Because if the difference that, is, so... we we didn't play well, but a team who gets an automatic promotion spot doesn't uh -huh. play well and still wins games, uh -huh. and they still win uh -huh. games by scoring like penalties teams. like that. On my stream, I said, do you mm. really think Leicester, Ipswich or Southampton would miss that penalty in that situation? No, 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 they wouldn't. They'd no. take it and they'd get three points and they'd move on. Yeah, the difference is we played, we didn't play great, right? But that chance, missing it like that is unforgivable. I wouldn't have even found it as bad if he'd have got it on target and the keeper had pulled off 100%. a good save. Yeah. But to target. sky it into the stand like that, yeah. that's yeah. unforgivable because that is just genuinely terrible. That, like yes. the way, it, the way it was yeah. said last night on Sky was the best description of it. As Mirbegovic said it, you have a free shot from twelve yards, free shot from twelve yards. The minimum that's expected is you work the goalkeeper. Minimum yep. hit the target. Yep. Minimum. Um, I mean, it wasn't even close at the end. Like, mm -hmm. and if it had been on target, I think the, and the Keeper goes the other way, but it's a good height for the goalkeeper if if it's under the bar because it's dead center nearly. Any goalkeeper yeah. would save it if it's central, but yeah, but it's not the reason we lost that game. To be very clear, no. there's lots of no, reasons yeah. that we lost. No. Can I just say, if you can see, really just just one thing about Bamford. Uh, I have a slightly different opinion. Uh, of course, th that shows that the player was completely nervous. He wasn't calm. He was. I agree uh, with the uh, the uh, side self before side in this in this case mm -hmm. because if you're not in the right state to take that penalty and he showed that because he corrected it so he showed that he just wanted to smash the yeah, yeah, yeah. Board to that. yeah. It, it, in that situation you need to be calm he wasn't calm if you skyrocket the but ball of the bar he didn't smash the ball he just clipped it like if you look at it he doesn't put his laces through that ball it's an in step clip and it's it's it goes up there's not a yeah. massive amount of power on that shot. I mean, I would have rather he put... Yeah, if no you're power. Confident uh, you put if, your if head you know down and you just smash the ball, you know? And he doesn't Yeah, do I that. just wanted to, to, to try to, to, to put in... in, in uh, um, to place it in a corner here and look great. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm. But, yeah, uh, about what, what you said, actually, uh, if there were two players arguing, of course, because Bamford kept uh, uh, at the ball and wanted to take the penalty, also some of it was ready to... wanted to take that as... As we said, in that case, if you, uh, I'm really surprised there's not there was not a ready substitute for Piro in terms of penalty taker. Yeah, and yeah. and that's it's up to the manager to determine. It's up to the manager to determine where to take it. About from going back to Sam Allardyce, he said they hadn't discussed penalty penalty takers, didn't he, before the Newcastle game? I mean, 
you're you're right, aren't you? There should have been somebody yeah. lined up. Yeah, the but also the people decide to argue, not... or or, yeah. or the side who takes it. Farkas should get involved, you know. Farkas should say not every not every club does that though, Andre. If at every level, yeah, some yeah, clubs will have, a, will have a kick taker, and then with penalties, it's always a case of if you want it, take it because there's yeah. a there's a level of balls, for lack of a better term, in this some of the lads. But there's a, there's a, there's a, a, an element of yeah, I'll, I want this. I'll hit this because a lot of people, and you see when it gets the penalty shootouts, even the best players can get very, very shy very quickly about taking a penalty when it really matters. Yeah, yeah. So there is an element of, I'm happy anyone to take it. If they feel confident enough to take it, fine. The problem with this situation is Pat Bamford has bad history. And I, I get yeah. it, you want to break the duck. I get it. I'm, I, I was in it myself when I played as a striker. I missed penalties and I, I know you want to score one and get it. I'll get the monkey off your back. I get it. But in that situation, it's nil-nil. And I'm, I, I didn't get angry when he missed. Because I was nearly resigned to a missing before I even took the kick. I just kind of looked at it. And when he went over, yeah. my, my, my exact thoughts went to, ah, oh, Jesus, pa. And, I, and, I, and at exactly. that moment, my, yeah. my initial thought at that moment wasn't anger, wasn't trying to call him out on Twitter. My initial reaction was, I feel really upset for this guy right now because he's about to get bat. Hang on. He's, a, on a per- he's about to get battered. Why would you put yourself in that situation, given the history that you've gotten, you can't not expect the backlash you're moment, going to yeah. get because now. Because you're because a narcissist. You because you're a narcissist, yeah. That's why. Yeah. If you're a narcissist, that's exactly what you'll do. Yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> r- r- right now, right now, you know, it sounded like you were calling Jer a narcissist. There's a, there's a, then, there's a lot. There's yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Not Jer. Not Jer. <laughs> yeah. No, no, there's a there's a lot of people, of course. I, I like the criticism, honestly, because you can criticize. Uh, there's also insults. On, on the internet, but the real problem, lad, lad, is I don't think he'll leave in January. I don't think I, I think he stayed till, till the end of the season, so we have to recover him because he, he'll still be the first backup striker because we have no backup right now because Gerard is always out of the squad. We've, we've but the thing is, though, Andre, you say that. Yeah, that squad. yeah the only one is Joseph. Yeah, he's, but, he's, he's, he's a different player in terms of weight of uh, style of football. So you know he's a finisher. He's a finisher, yeah. Andrea. That's his. That's his thing. I, I, Mateo yeah, Joseph is the most. And we said this last year, and we saw him in the twenty ones, and we saw him even getting around the box for the first team when he did come in. He looked a threat around the box. He looked like he would. Absolutely. As soon as he gets the ball, he's going to have a strike on goal. He's a finisher, and he's a confident finisher. And we talked. They, they talked an awful lot last year about progression of the young players through, and the investment that Leeds have put in buying new players and bringing them in at a young age. And when you bring in someone like Mateo Joseph, and he's sitting out of the squad behind Pat Bamford at the point where Pat Bamford's in his 30s now of his career like given Pat's scoring history over the last three years given the the, the, the the water that's gone under the bridge between Pat and the fans at this point even seeing I said this to you last week Joe during the week Joe, on the show mm. when you saw him come on the pitch this year he doesn't look like he's confident he doesn't look like he fits the group anymore my, my, my partner Jess says it all the time like she goes he just doesn't fit anymore he doesn't look right there anymore and that's not just and we can be angry and we can point the finger and we can shout and scream whatever else we want to do and, and it's absolutely understandable given the circumstances but there is a point where it's at some point it's got to be right for him as well and is this right for him is playing for Leeds United at this no, point in his not. career needs to, right yeah. for him yeah, but- yeah and, and, because it's not going to get any better I mean he could score two goals next week and there'll be a handful of idiots on Twitter going where's the Bamford haters now you know yeah, and then the rest yeah, of them yeah. going give it a week give it a week I've always said it, in, in, on my show at all times if Patrick Bamford produces the goods that he's getting paid to do then I'll be the first to like you know uh, eat my words but Time and time again, he doesn't do it. Now, this isn't a personal thing. This is a fact that, as you say, Jer, at the end of the day, there's got to be a little bit of self-respect where he says, I actually don't fit because you're right. He doesn't look like he fits in that squad. The, the, the squad generally is full of like young, excited, hungry players. And he comes on and he looks out of place. Um, and to your point, um, Andrea, you said, you know, he's a backup striker. On what grounds? Because he's not scoring goals. So, you know, at the end of the day, he should not really stay. In terms of numbers of players, Kate, just because of that. In terms of numbers of players. In terms of squad depth. Do you know what? Yeah, but Joseph Lutz, I agree on on the praise with Joseph. Absolutely. I I, I get the praise. Yeah, yeah. I I just finished this one. But 
Joseph is uh, a talent. I agree on that. But of course, he's been injured, and we need to introduce him gradually. Like, like, uh, like he, he can he can be a, a, a have an, in, an instant impact like Gray. But we've seen Farke using him as a winger in preseason also. We should consider that. So I don't, I don't know if he sees him uh, looking at, at his history too as a number nine. So looking at right now and trying to think like Farke, I think the only two number nines he, see, he, he sees are Bamford and unfortunately Rotter because the other number nine is Piro clearly and 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 not Rotter. That's why. And that's something to get into. In We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. Don't worry. But just, I, I, really want, I wanted to ask, what's the difference right now? And and, and I'm, I'm being slightly... Facetious. Yeah, I was going to say a bit of hyperbole in this, but just, okay. just to hear me out, though, would it, yeah, no, you're, you're dead right. It is. I am being facetious here, but yeah. <laughs> what's the difference between a non-scoring striker, number nine, like Pat Bamford, and a non-scoring Joe Gellhart? What's the difference? They're both not scoring. Joffy, Joffy yes. can run around as well. Joffy can press. Joffy can run around. No, not as good as Bamford. It's just though. the history, no, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know that. But all that, ultimately, all that play. Is, ultimately can I just say, nine, in the... In the, in the, the nine, your, job, your job is to score goals. Yeah, and yeah. if you're not scoring goals, then you shouldn't be in that position. Other strikers have been knocked down the pecking order. And I know someone tried to pull me up on Twitter again yesterday. About telling, oh, we're telling Daniel Farke who should play as a nine and who should play as a ten. I'm sick of having the conversation now because I still think it's bloody obvious what we should be doing. Yeah. And we've got uh, plenty of number nines there that can play in the number nine role. And we've got a yeah. manager who doesn't want to play them in the number nine role. And we're not getting what and we should I, be I'm getting with you on number that, nine enough. I, Absolutely I, agree. I, I am yeah, with you. Know I think I, was I'm the, with you on that. Do you know what I think I was the most, frus- <laughs> the most frustrating thing about that game is that I actually thought if we take the penalty out of the game, Patrick Bamford did more in his time on the pitch than Pirro did yeah, in did. the yeah. entire rest of the game. Yeah, come here. But you're right. But again, this is and it's it's comparing apples and oranges. Yeah, Bamford came on in number nine, and Rutter went yeah, to number ten. So, yeah, so that's what I was Pirro's leading on to. So, 10. so, so maybe that is more evidence to the point that if. Hero was played in the number 10, he no, would get into those positions more often because you saw that for the penalty, Bamford moved into that position. He actually made a really good run and was brought down in the box. There was the yeah. one after the penalty where he did a little like back heel flick perfectly to Crescencio Somerville. Fantastic okay. block from uh, Kiana Hoover. He um, first time. Yeah, he should have done. But Bamford being in that position, having an actual striker who knows how to make a striker's runs made a difference in that game. So if Pirro goes up in there and makes a striker's run and he's always in that position, then there's so much more chance of scoring a goal. There was one in the first half where it was so frustrating because Nonto put it directly across the face of goal. Perfect ball. Because if there is a striker there and a striker like Joel Pirro, we've actually got one in the side if he's there, no he the scores ball. it yeah. 10 times Too out far of from 10. the box, both of them. He's yeah. never in the box, but he's not I actually there, he's said playing. on my stream, and he's not even on the on the screen, the as picture. in on the Sky yeah, Sports yeah. footage. Yeah. You could not see him. He was that far back because he was in the number yeah. 10 position. He should have been there. If he was playing the in the striker beat. position, he would have been there. I'm he's, getting saying, abused, just, for, just, he's getting abused for not being in the box. And you're like, oh, but yeah, but the manager's not asking him to play in that yeah. position. And then you've got Rutter who's dropping even deeper than him again at times. And you're not yeah. playing. We had this weird system yesterday where the back four were really high up, but the strikers were really, really deep. And we had this big, long bulge in the middle of the park. And we couldn't do anything with the ball. There was no runs. There was no movement because no one had anywhere to go. And it's all because we've got so many square pegs and round holes. And even the games we win... And I wanted to say this. I got called out on, after the Norwich game because we've the best defensive record in the league. And I was pulled up because I said, we're starting games too slowly. We've got too many square pegs. And I was called out by plenty of people in this chat last week. And I said, the problem with starting slowly is it's contagious. And we have started this year slowly. Cardiff, Southampton, Norwich, QPR, and Sheffield yeah, Wednesday. We right. And we went on a way to Yeah, you were. You were, you were right, Joe. And, oh, and yeah, that say- beard. It's having an effect on you, man. I like mm. it. <laughs> 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 no, you'll be two timing me already, you. Um, <laughs> it's those beers, Joe. You know what I mean. <laughs> I just want to add as well, right? And I agree with Max in this uh, stink. I, I see Max took a bit of flat, like calling him a Bamford apologist or whatever. I actually said, and I'll say, and I still say now, that with Pirro in the ten, that when Bamford's on the pitch and in the nine, Leeds United look better as a unit. Off the ball, we look better as a unit. In build-up, we look better as a unit because Rutter's playing in the 10. 
round right? holes. It's not so, because it's not because we're not saying it's because Bamford is a fantastic player. Yeah, exactly. It's, and somebody saying laughing, saying Bamford natural striker. He's played yeah. there his entire career, so he knows yeah. how to make a striker's runs. Exactly. So yeah. even yeah. just that on its own, take the rest of his game out of play. The fact that he can't mm. hit the barn door with a banjo, he is in the right place at the right time a lot of the time. And Pirro yeah, knows how to do that as well because he's a striker. So all yeah. we're saying is Bamford, and, and, and somebody said as well about um, the reason, and Farker mentioned this at one point, that Pirro can't play up front is because he doesn't press. We did not press Stoke last night at all. They we pressed, pressed us. any team this year, Max. We yeah. barely pressed at all this season. So, so that yeah. that whole that argument holds no weight for me because Pirro oh, yeah. isn't required to press because all we do is sort of shuffle from the side and sit off teams whilst they play out from the back. Yeah, so for yeah. me, I think he, he's perfectly capable of being in there. Yeah, yeah we, we no, only think, press on I the think, sides, yeah. basically. We only press on, yeah. press on the yeah. sides. And another thing, you know, uh, look, looking at the formation yesterday, you have Rotor in the 9, Piro in the 10, then you have Gruy and Ampadu. With three static players in the middle, Piro, Ampadu and Gruy, there was no verticality. The ball always went to the sides, to the wings. Uh, how can you win a game with that? You, ca you cannot rely... With the narrowness, especially in the middle, you cannot rely on a single episode from Bamford in the, on a penalty, especially with the squad you have against a, a very average Stoke side. A very average Stoke side. Let's not, let's not forget that we have squad depth also on, on the bench. We yeah. should have won that game looking at, at the quality we have 2 0. 2 0. Yeah, honestly. Let me let me cannot run a penalty. I, d I do want to come back to that because, I d like I said, there's been a lot of um, question marks over Farker for his team selection, for his persistence with the 9 and 10, for his substitutions, for him not being able to coach a press, I see. You know, he enjoyed reading that reading that um, thread on Twitter. People that know Ball much more than me. Um, you know, and, and some fans saying he should be getting more. He should be doing yeah. more. And and we will get into that, but just to round off on Bamford because we've done half an hour. I do just want to, just oh God, I just want to. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's because we're having fun. See, um, before we move on to Farker, because that's the next part. Um, I want to just round off. Like, is there a way back? Um, no. for Pat, and I want you to give it like, not if you love him or you feel sorry for him. What's best for Leeds United at this point? What's best? For Leeds United at this point, not what's best for Bamford, what's best for your agenda, my agenda, even if you don't have an agenda, what's best at this moment now for Leeds United moving forward. And I just want to go around. I think for me, ideally, if we can loan him out in January, I'd be up for that. No one's going to buy him. Ultimately, when he scored his 17 goals, we put him on a five year deal. I don't know how long is left of that. I will check that while we go three. around. Three, three, years. three years still left, is there? Okay, so, so no one's going to buy him. Being on death row, isn't issue. it? Waiting for that to <laughs> like that contract to run out. <laughs> but we know what Kate's answer is, so we don't need no, to go. Don't. No, you don't. Oh, go, go on, Kate. Go on, go. Okay, so basically today I got. To, I do, I've got to bring this in. Um, I had a little rant um, as I do on Twitter yesterday after the match, and I actually left and blinded, and I got a little re reaction from you know little Michael, little Michael Pallet, our little friend. Oh, I don't. I don't. Go on. He basically said that it was a shocking reaction and I'm not a proper supporter. And, you know, I, I thought about that in terms of at the end of the day, you expect a certain level of play from um, somebody that's getting paid 70k a week, 35k a week, whatever he, where, yeah. whatever he is. He's not performing. If he starts performing and starts being a little more sort of humble about stuff, Fine, but if he's continuing as he is at the moment, then I I I think he needs to go out on loan. Um yeah. I don't think he can turn it around. I just do not yeah. think that. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I and I agree with you, and I just want to say, like, um uh, people who question over question other people's fandom, it's entirely up to you how you react. Um I agree with you one hundred percent. The guy's paid. I was calling him a shit stain. I was calling him all sorts. I'm not <laughs> I'm not like having you know, I would never say this to him in the street. I'm not, like, going to abuse him or anything like that. But I agree 100% with you, Kate. At the end of the day, you are paid to do a job and you are letting the football club down. And that's what that's what it was. And listen, Patrick has to go home and deal with that himself. But he sh like Joe said earlier, he shouldn't have put himself in that situation. I felt Farker 
potentially could have maybe not said he won't be taking it again. I know a lot of fans would have lapped it up, but he could have had that conversation with Bamford outside of the interview. Um, but he did say, and and and, and Farkas said uh, said he's he's experienced, he's missed before, he'll deal with it. End of the end end of discussion. Can I just add as well? Him, so you can. What I, I totally agree with what 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 Max said earlier. And I, I, I wanted to mention this. I think like when you get to this level, well, actually any level, the thing that sets you apart from like champions, um, teams that are going to get automatic promotion is the fact that under pressure, when when the team isn't playing particularly well, you grind out some kind of win. We could have like nicked three points yesterday if we'd been if we'd been better 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 at it, which is why I, I'm worried a little bit um, now for us because I don't know whether um, we we have necessarily as a t- I don't know whether we've We've got what it takes, to be honest with you. I don't. I can't see the hunger there at the moment. We will. We will, we will definitely get there. Um. So, me and me and Kate are probably saying it, we need to part ways in January if we can. Um. Andrea, what are your thoughts? Is there a comeback? Um. Is there a redemption arc for Bamford at all? Uh, not really style of football, honestly, for me. But uh, I don't think it's realistic in my point of view, at least, to see him leave in January because of his contract. It'd be difficult to loan him out, uh, especially because all the teams are covered basically, yeah. and uh, he's been struggling with the in- with the injury history in the recent season. Also, it's not a it's not reliable in the term, unfortunately for him, of course, because we all remember uh, when he was consistent, and, uh, not injured. You know, after the first injury he had when when he signed for the club, uh, after all season he, he never recovered. He, he never recovered his his form, his uh, his good shape. You know, in terms of uh, what he used to be. So I think it'd be difficult to to loan him out in January. I think the realistic option for him to leave will be next uh, next summer, and yeah. uh, that worries me because right now, of course, I agree about Joseph, for example, but also Gellert. Uh, but you need uh, an alternative to Pirro, and Bamford right now is not an alternative. That backup in the pecking order is because he's always the first player subbed in in place for one of the strikers. But you need a reliable player capable of scoring and bringing something different um, if you want to change the formation mid-game. And uh, the only way I see another player arriving in January, another striker, another option, is by Bamford leaving. And yeah. I just said that I don't see that happening because we've seen that the 49ers during the summer have waited for a player to leave in order to bring another player in. Oh. So will they do that again in January? The closes are not there anymore, for example. So it's all in the runs, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, honestly, I would like to see another striker coming in because we're struggling to score. Bamford yeah. is not scoring and uh, he's not looking like scoring. Not, not, not just not scoring. He's not looking like scoring. Uh, Joseph, he, he can have an instant impact like Gray, but uh, can turn out to be like Sonny Perkins. You know, you don't know if they can um, translate yeah, and bring what they had in youth football to first-team football immediately. It might, it might yeah. take time. Yeah, they might have an impact like Gellert and then uh, drop off a bit because they struggle to... Look at Matty Logstaff, for example, at Newcastle. Look at his uh, career trajectory right now. It, there's still a player in there, for example. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, after that, that season, he has uh, slowed down a bit, you know, in terms of his uh, career path. Uh, so, yeah, honestly, the, the problem is we have Piro, the other number nine in the squad. The only two nine has, uh, nines are Bamford and Piro. One is playing in the 10 and the other one yeah. is struggling. Oh, yeah, he's not, he's not been. He's, not, he's never been playing in the nine for for Leeds. Exactly, he's not a nine. Either you start playing him in the right position, he's in the right he position, or, or you don't have a, a, other players. You know, you don't have proper nines in the squad right now. That's the real problem for me, and that's why I, I like to see another another nine coming what? What in. Say, what did you say? You don't have what? Sorry, a number nine, Kate. We don't a keep. proper number nine, a, 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 a proper striker. You know, the, right. the, the outside the man. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the manager's um, eyes. Manager, yeah, in the manager's yeah, exactly. Um, just to just to, and then we can move on to Farker. Bamford's yeah. redemption or not? I have so much I want to say about the game, but so I'll keep this really brief. But Bamford, yeah, just on I, Bamford yeah. for him and for Leeds, I think a party of the ways is good, and I and I, and I mean this 
I'm not getting into personal insults about a footballer. I will critique no. him on his performance as a Leeds player. It's not been good enough. He hasn't done enough. He keeps grabbing footballs for free kicks and penalties when he has no history of scoring them. And um, I admire the fact that he's got the balls to do that. For, if I had that much confidence in my own ability on a day-to-day basis, I'd probably be earning away more money than I am. That would be great to have. I don't. I don't put myself in those positions. So for me, I think for him and the remainder of his career and kickstarting his career again, I think he needs to get a move away from Leeds. He doesn't look happy. He doesn't look like he's confident. And I, and I just think the fans... and. Just, even if he scores next week and scores the week after, scores the week after, everyone's going to be waiting yeah. on the next miss. So for me, I 100%. think, yeah. I agree with Kevin. Um, I think alone, hundred percent. I think you've hit the nail on the head. I forgot about the free kicks as well. So yeah, um, Max, just sorry, quickly, one, mate, sorry, one then... thing that one thing has been yeah. missed, <laughs> and I'm really shocked at this for especially for people who are who are looking to have a go at Pat Bamford. He was marking Wesley for their goal, by the way. He got yeah, pushed out of the way by Wesley and he got that won the header. Yeah. That's the, that was straight after it. So not only did he not score the goal, he didn't mark the player who caused their goal. Yeah. So uh, for sure. Yeah. You can go check Logan. Um Max. Yeah, I think it's a time for part of the ways, isn't it? I think yeah. he's one of the old guard, but not so much in that he can really even be useful anymore. Like you say, he kind of looks out of place. It's like like I think if another fan was watching and they saw our team, we got all this fresh new look team, and then Bamford came off the bench, and go, "Oh, Bamford still plays for them." Yeah, didn't, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought he'd gone somewhere else. Man, like, I've got so it, many messages, Max, from other content creators saying, "Why are you still playing this guy? Why are you still persisting with him? Why yeah. is he allowed to take penalties?" And we're asking that as a fan base. So you're right. You bang on. Yeah, um, I, I think it's <laughs> his time is up. But like Andrea says, we're probably not going to be able to get rid of him this season. So. If if we do use him, I hate to say this, but he could be a useful championship player if he doesn't go anywhere near free kicks or um, penalties. <laughs> because when he does come on, he actually created a couple of chances. But I want to get rid of him, but he is going to be played. So we're kind of going to have to accept the reality that he is going to be played. Yeah. But I don't mind it if it's for 10 minutes at the end of the game and he doesn't touch a penalty ever again in his life. Because yeah. I think he did help. <laughs> Ignore the penalty. He, at he Leeds, did help you know. in those attacking situations. But it, and, and and people say, "Oh, Bamford apologist." Well, I'm not. I'm just. He, I watched it, and he did create yeah, two yeah. chances as well as yeah. as well as missing that penalty. Um, but yeah, you get get rid of him. Um, I think he's a nice bloke. I've yeah, got nothing yeah, exactly. against the person, just yeah, the footballer. Yeah, and I, just, I don't think he's good for our club anymore. Hundred uh, percent. Just to just to. Finally finish off. We're criticising. Don't ever please send abuse to Patrick Bamford on a personal level. If no, you want to put out not. the ether on social media, do that, whatever. But don't be atting him. Don't be messaging his missus. Don't be doing all that. Because if you do, you're an absolute wrong one. And that's facts. But anyway. This is a professional debate yes. about professional yes. footballer and yeah. the way that he's performing in his role. Yeah. Based that on performances, nothing yes. else. Yeah, yes, correct. yeah, exactly. Um you Just imagine any other employee getting a performance review. Yeah, <laughs> you said this is a professional debate. I was like, calm down on the professional. No, 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 no. I've changed it. I know, I know. I forgot to say, because I said that I, I think it stays in, it's near, near, till next summer, you know, and we still need to uh, try to recover him and try to recover him into the, the pitch in terms yeah. of, because he'd it, be here, so... Uh, you need to, to try to to take get that player back, you know, to, to get him useful in in a certain way. Uh, right. If he stays still next Just, summer, yeah. Finish. Let's move it on, Andrea. Yeah, done. <laughs> Bamford, right? Okay, Andrea, you start us off then, bro. Um, you mentioned, and I know you you've mentioned this setup. You've been an advocate of saying if you're going to play with, um. Ampadu and Gruyev. And actually, let me just... Why is he... Why, right? And this is... Fark has actually pissed me off with this. Why he gave Gruyev his debut, right? Away, Wednesday night, at Stoke, right? And I know that comes into that cliche. Yeah, but I actually now. looked... Guess how many minutes he'd played before starting? Four. Four, Four minutes of football and he starts him in that game. That's wild in itself for me. But you mentioned the two sitting DMs, because that's what they were, in effect, two, two sixes, and no proper number 10. And Joe touched on it as well about how the structure was set up was just really 
piss poor. And are these for you, Andre, the first real question marks? Have we been getting by and because we're winning games, is it a case of, you know, I know you have tried to said to me, you know, there's this, this, that. And I'm like, yeah, but we're winning. Yeah, but this, but um, there are, are there bigger issues than what we, what we think? Well, uh, I think um, we need to look at all the games. We've won games, we've drawn games, we've lost games, uh, of course. But uh, the only game we really dominated from start to the end, I think it was against Watford. Watford. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At Norwich, we were really bad. Start is low. And uh, they um, had a bad game plan in the second half because they, 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 they didn't press, again, press us again. They were pressing us like Southampton in the first half and it was working for them. They, they stopped doing that. We got back into the game. But like I said uh, back then, it's not Christmas happens just once every year. So we've seen that yesterday. You know, it's not it, it cannot work every every game. You know, because yesterday it was like a carbon copy apart from the go from the goal because they didn't score in the first half uh, of Norwich at Stoke yesterday because they they pressed us and now every team every smart team will do that because we struggle mm -hmm. when they do that with the eye pressing. And we don't get we we don't have the countermeasures, especially with to to, to uh, sit in DMs, and uh, to finish that off, you know, Watford was the only game where we dominated with the mentality from start to finish, and we started well. We um, get too long to get into the game against UPR. We did get too long to get into the game against Bristol City. You know, right now it's still a, a work in progress in terms of mentality. This this team, you know, uh, I was surprised honestly by. The, um, the comeback at Norwich because if you look at the first half we look like a, a, a flat team a, a flat team we won so everyone was happy but if you look at the world performances the signs were already there also in other games where where we came back or we won we were not perfect we we're, just, we're still a work in progress and about the formation where we signed Gruyev I said okay we signed Gruyev I don't think a player from the Bundesliga was at uh, 31 appearances last season in a Bundesliga side, uh, a prestigious one like Werder Bremen, of course, they were newly promoted, but they're still a prestigious side. You don't play, you don't get into the, the team if you're not good. Will sign for Leeds to be on the bench. So it was surprising he was not playing. And I said, I think if they signed him, it's because he wants to play him, him alongside Ampadu. But if he wants to do that, we need a number 10. Because Ampadu and Gruyff, they don't have verticality. They don't, they don't have ball carrying. They're two, they're two sitting DMs. And Ampadu has more pace than Gruyev. Gruyev has little to no pace. He's a six. If, if, he's a, if you look, he's an six. Exactly. And also in the second half, when he started to do a little bit better, he mm. just played with two touches because he's a player, a linker player. He's a linker player. He's not a ball carrying player. He's not. He's not really also a playmaker. The real playmaker is Ampadu out there. So you need a player if you don't have verticality in the two uh, with the two DMs. You need a player coming back to get the ball. And that player was Rotter, but also Piro, because Piro was playing the 10. So there was no one up there. There was no one. And uh, that's why we needed that proper 10, if you wanted to play with 2-6, two, two, because there's no verticality. The ball goes always with the one-on-one -on -one of the wingers. Yeah. Always, yeah. always. And you don't always beat your man. Nyonto struggled yeah. to beat his man yesterday at the beginning. Then beating his man in more. certain occasions. But... Right now, if you look at both Anthony and Yonto, probably we cannot afford to play with that summer because some of his own, the only one beating his man constantly with the uh, with consistency, you know. So after yesterday, my opinion is that in certain cases, Parker is really stubborn and he wants to play at all costs his style of football without having the players in certain position to play that particular style of football. Because we're playing with Byram, for example, he's doing well, but we play with Byron, we play with Shackleton uh, on the left, and we're playing with the, an inverted left back every time. And but Fark has always played in certain in certain games, especially in the crucial ones in his former teams, with two proper left back left back and a proper still, left back. And a, he still plays inverted fullbacks, though. That's important to point out. He still expects his fullbacks to come inside, not outside. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But I I I, I want to see also. Uh, in this formation, in instead of football, a fullback capable of overlapping. But of course, we can do that on the right on the right side, but we cannot do that on the left side because uh, the, the left. left the left back goes uh, ninety out of uh, one hundred uh, times inside, not on the outside. 
with the overlap. It goes with the underlap. So that's that's another talking point for me. And there's also the ball staggers on the side uh, with no proper 10. The only one moving, trying to roam around and help the players when the ball is staggered on one side is water. It's just water. It's just him, you know. So mm -hmm. he, he, he's, he's focused on a certain style of football, but he doesn't have the players to play a style of football because Piro is not is not Puki. He's a different number nine. Yeah. He's a different number nine. He cannot he cannot play Piro like he played with Puki, for example. So he's playing in the ten and he's playing Rotor because Rotor has more pace than Piro as, as the number nine. But he has no other play. You need to play him as the number number ten. And that, that's why he's playing. He's forced to play some players out of position, like the inverted full. But uh, he's not back. forced. He's no, not forced. Uh, it, it's what I was going to say. He's forced for the for the left back, but he's not forced for the number ten, because he, he, that, that's his decision. His decision. And honestly, I don't get all the force around his speech because he didn't say anything in particular when he explained with that fifteen-minute uh, explanation about Piro in the ten. Uh, he just said that he sees him more. more uh, in the ten, because he doesn't press, and he wants Rotter to stretch yeah. the team up forward. So uh, it's obvious; it was obvious. And also, he worked well with other other strikers in his past. But uh, you can do something wrong with another striker, of course. If you have good history with a certain player, all accumulated um, by a certain style of football, Puki, Turam, all of them. This is a different striker. You need to adapt him. You need to work differently with him because he's not Puki. He's not uh, a Turam. He's not, for example, Jordan Ogil. Uh, you know, you need to try to find a way to play him in the nine because we're losing a player. He's like playing with the main set of occasions. So of course, we're in his course with Olapi, but he just, just goes inside the box. He just scored outside of the box once. Once he struggles to do one-on-one. -on -one. He's just a finisher. He's like uh, Ivan Tony at Brentford when he went, they were in yeah. the championship. But yeah. Ivan Tony was playing inside of the box, inside of the box, near the box. We have two players, Rotter and Piro, always near, more near the center circle than the box. That's the problem also. Even when we're winning, I, I want to be very clear, even when we're winning. So I'm happy when we win, but as a football fan, I can explain my opinion and say, okay, we're winning, but there's two problems that may come back to haunt us. Like the, the, the those dropping points, you know, because of those those things, you know, those performances uh, affecting those performances, and uh, other teams are picking up points at difficult places, like for example Ipswich at Bristol City, where I've not picked up points at Stoke. We should have won against Stoke before the the, the red card. Uh, yeah, also uh, Sheffield Wednesday, also uh, WBA, you know, <laughs> there, there's a lot of. Uh, of question marks about those performances because we are way better than that. And I, I say this, these things because we are way better than that. Uh, and yeah, now I finish so I can catch up the balloons of Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, great, mate. Great. And you've, oh my God, well, um, there's so much you've gone through, mate. Amazing. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, it was uh, like a little rant, you know. No, but you need it, bro. You need it. Yeah, I want to see us better because we can be better. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Joe's going to do exactly the same, um, and then Max <laughs> is going to bring us all back and say it's everything's going to be all right. But Joe, um, see me when I'm watching the game, and it starts, and Stoke are pressing as high, and I see the gaps mm. behind, and I think, do you know what? They're committing That's suicide here. If we, yeah. if we, if we can get in behind, we're going to score. We're going to score on the counter. But Did we try exactly like. There was just nothing, and and it and it's it's one of them where we could play for another ninety minutes and still not score, right? It wasn't until James and some. It's like we came alive in the last five ten minutes, but at that point as well, um, yeah. you know, we 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 uh, retreat as well. But there's a. Um, I hate to say this out loud, and I, I get a cold sweat and a shiver on my skin when I say this out loud. But there was one thing that Sam Allardyce said that he was 100% correct on. If you're being pressed, you bypass the press. You go into the corner flags. And we have the players who are capable of clipping that ball, like Stroke, 
like Rodon, like Ampadu. We have players there. But as I said, for whatever reason yesterday, we ended up with this just weird looking shape like this in the middle of the park where there was just nowhere for anyone to go. The players couldn't run in behind because they'd be offside. It was so compact. And then I saw one stage, Farke shouting onto the pitch, doing this, going compact, compact. And I'm like, oh, no, this needs to be open. And we need to exploit the spaces that we've got, not squidge everything in tighter. Like, it's not working like that. And um, so you bypass the press. If you are being pressed, you bypass them. We've got players. We've got wingers who have pace. I mean, people are screaming to see Anthony. He played. Didn't play particularly well, but it's one game. Um, mm. But we've got players who can get in behind. Rutgers fast. He can get in behind. You've got, you know, um, Nanto loves that kind of ball in behind. And he was, there was a lot of times Nanto was looking to try and make that run in behind the fullback and just the ball wasn't coming. So, you know, there was there was a lot of things wrong with the setup. I, I disagree on the rotation stuff with a lot of people. I think people are picking after the match to talk about how the selection was wrong because I didn't see anybody calling it out before the game outside of Archie. Again, people question why Archie was starting the game. Uh, uh, when are we going to see Groove if we don't play the guy? Like being really... There's people saying some really nasty things about Groove and I want to make a point of Mateus Click's debut for Leeds was away from home and it was so bad that he was shipped off to Utrecht on loan for the rest of the season. And only for Leeds changed their manager, we may never have seen him in a Legion United shirt again. And what a miss that would have been as well. This is Groove's debut. Having played four minutes, he had to play at some point. Not from the see. start, bro. Not from the start, Joe. You, you, know, you either play him or Ampadu. One of them. Me. I'd love to get to a point. You can't say that, bro. You're saying things that we disagree with. I know of that, but I'm, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and this is my point to say that I'm disagreeing with them. People have made their points about the players, and I'm now getting my point to say that. Yeah, I'm you go, yeah. yeah. Flows yours, you mate. <laughs> so he has to play at some point. I thought he'd actually had a better second half than he had a first half. That first half, he was all over the place. Second half, I thought he made some really, really good tackles when he had to. But that's the player that he is. And the, the issue that I have with the entire lineup of Leeds right now, and please go back and watch the Norwich game before we scored and then watch what we said after the stream when I was laughed at for criticising how we played in that game, right? Go back and re-watch all of that for everyone who said those things because you can see these performances coming a mile away. These are, these are contagious. If a team starts a build-up from the back that's slow and it doesn't pick up tempo, and I said about 20 minutes in, if we don't pick this up, we're going to be in trouble here because it is so hard from a team to get themselves going when they start slow. Leeds have an issue here. There's an, the, And the issue is we are starting far too many games where we're not going at teams. We have players capable of ripping championship defences apart. The earlier part of the season, it looked like it was low blocks we were going to have an issue with. Now it seems to be any team that comes out with the start of the game and has a go at us will beat us or will score goals against us. So we have got to pick this up. The, the under-21 team have the exact same issue where they have these inconsistent starts to games. Now, I don't know whether it's a group thing or what it is, but if you look at the other two teams that are top of the, the top two positions, they're run, they are powering at teams. They are going at teams consistently and taking them apart. I mean, Leicester, even though they had a bit of a wobble during the week, they did, at no point did I think they weren't going to win that game. At no point. And I'm watching so many Leeds games this year going. And, and the big one for me, and I keep going back to it, was, Holding the ball up in the corner flag against 10 players in Elland Road against a team that were second bottom in the table with 18 minutes left on the clock was shocking for me. That was the most shocking thing to see. It's going, hang on a second. Why would anyone ask us against a weak side at home with less players on the park to time waste? I no. think it was even Rip worse because they had a striker in net. I, I have to say, every time we talk in about goal. this, they had a striker in goal and we weren't uh, trying no to shots. shoot. Not Just, one. Not yeah. one. Um, and then you go through the team lineup and you look at it, right? You have a left back at so you have a you have a right back at left back, you have a central midfielder at right back, you have a nine in the ten, a ten in the nine. Okay. There's too many square pa- and, and it's not needed, it's not necessary, and it's not for it. And I'm gonna make this point, and people are gonna disagree with me, but just hear me out on this. We have a natural right back in the team, and his name is Luke Ailing. Okay. Whether you think he's good enough or not is irrelevant. He's a natural right back. So you play a natural right back if you've got a problem there. You have a secondary option, Jamie Shackleton, who has played right back as much as he has played centre mid in his career. So you've got an option there and has done fine for us this season, right and left back when he has played in both those positions for us, has been fine. He's an are option. We gonna re- are we going to rewrite history and say Gray's no good at right back now? Is that what No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying okay. you have natural players who can play in natural positions. 
right? This is not a criticism of Archie Gray. I've said a bit of top at left back as well. We have a right back playing left back. That's not a criticism, okay. criticism of Sam Byram. Two weeks ago, I said he's my player of the year so far. I think he's been brilliant for us. Yeah. But you've got square pegs in round holes, which causes problems in build up because you have players that are not used to certain movements, who are not used to certain patterns of play. Then you go into the front line. And my position on, on this is. Joe Perro is a goal scoring number nine. He either plays in the goal in the number nine or he doesn't play because Leeds are missing something in the number 10 position by not having a number 10. Yesterday was crying out for somebody who could drop into midfield, pick up the ball and get us going. And we didn't have that because, and it's not a criticism of Joe Perro. That's not the player he is. He is not that player. He is not a Mateus Click. He is not a Pablo Hernandez. He is not an out and out playing number 10. We have him in there because we spend an awful lot of money for him. We need to play him. That's not the that and that shouldn't be the case. He should be playing in his natural position, as every player should be, if you have the option to play them there. And we do have the options right now. To say that Farak is not getting the most out of this squad because he doesn't have the players to play the system isn't true because he's bought these players that he wanted. He got to pick these players. This team has been put together for him. So if he can't make them play his style, then he's recommended the wrong players. I'm not saying mm. he has, I'm saying if. If that's the case, so yeah. this is one of the best looking squads in, in the in the league. I'm nearly finished, Kate. I'm two seconds. I'm nearly done. This is one of the best looking squads in the league. The reason we got something out of Norwich was Dan James scores a fluky goal and we get back in the game. Up until that point, we didn't look like we were going to do anything in that game. And then all of a sudden, the tails were and Norwich panicked and dropped. They just dropped, and that yeah. gave us loads of space. And then you've got super talented players who could come on and make an impact. You know, um. Outside of Somerville, I have no issue with the other players coming into play because Nanto's a really good player in Italian international. Jaden yeah. Anthony, people were saying two weeks ago, is the, probably one of the best wingers we have but isn't playing enough football. Yeah, so he has to play as well. There is nobody in that team that are outside of maybe Stroke and, and Rode on the top were okay Stroke. yesterday. They were fine. Amelia did we had to do as well and he was fine. But outside of that, I don't think anybody had a good game. I don't think there was a 7 out of 10 in that on the pitch. Maybe Rutter, sorry, that's not fair. Rutter was excellent again. But you see how much, and I keep saying this, and I wish somebody would just just look at it with their eyes and say, yeah, every bit of good work that Jorginho Rutter does for Leeds is deep. It's dropping out from the defenders and it's picking up the ball and turning and running at people. So why we insist on putting him in the number nine position where he has to keep coming away from there to pick up the ball, to do something for us, when all you've got to do is play him in the 10 and he'll do it or play him on the wing and then play a striker, a striker, doesn't have to be Piro, play a number nine in the number nine position. And if we haven't got a number nine, or if we haven't got a right back that we trust, go and buy them in January because your squad's not ready yet. Yeah, that's Sorry. what I was saying, Joe. In the, when I said he doesn't have to play a sort of, of his formation, I agree with the nine and the ten because he, he, it's his choice. But Ailing is the other right back. But the way we're playing, I think he's asking him to do things he cannot do right now. <laughs> in ailing the way he, he plays right now because he, he gets too old and he struggles defensively for me so on, on the other thing so I, I agree on, on everything just just on I'm, I'm, not saying ailing, I'm, not, I'm not saying ailing should play but i'm saying is you've got a natural right back there and if he's not good enough you need yeah, to go and buy that. a natural right back go on, okay. can, I, can i just ask a question jeff because I, I i thought that was great um what at the end of the day are you saying that this this is on farka is that what you're saying that because it plays, it plays it yeah. because he's yeah. playing out of position, and you know, uh, as as they evidently are, is is it down to him? Is it is all this? On but ultimately, him? if you if you if you win or lose again, he said it himself, don't sign the contract if you can't take the pressure, you know. And when you, when it goes wrong, and it went wrong, it went wrong. You've lost to Stoke City, you know. You you really <sighs> shouldn't be losing. Draw whatever. You can come out with a point and you say with well, a bad performance, we still picked up a point, fine. But you didn't, and. And I'm going to just say this again. Ignoring Pat Bamford's miss. Yeah. We didn't look like we were going to score from open play. No. We didn't look like we were going to score. They did. They looked like they could have been two or three up inside the first 25 minutes. And we did nothing. We don't make changes at half time, which I think is, is which is, is an issue. Because sometimes I the change know. at half time is just a kick up the arse to a player to go, I'm going to take you off in the first half if you keep playing like that. Mm. And we've had too many bad first halves. And how many, how many games this season, and we're 13 games in, how many games this season have you looked at the team in the first half and went, needs to change the halftime? Yeah. 
I'd say the bulk of the games. Every, every game. You're saying it's contagious, Joe, yeah, this build up, the slow build out from the back. Why isn't it changing? Something has to change. The, like exactly what you said, the way that Norwich and Ipswich come out of the blocks at the beginning of a beginning of a match. Um, you know, it's it's, it's completely different. And that's got to do with the way they're being coached and, and you know, well, I, sure. I'm I don't want to criticize. I'm not criticizing Daniel Farrak as a manager, as a coach. I think he's done an excellent job. I can give him the absolute shit show that he came into at the start of the season. I think he's done an absolutely brilliant. And we are only 13 games in, so I, there's still 30 odd games left. So I, I do want to be a bit balanced with this a little bit. Just plenty of time, plenty of time. I keep saying that you've got a African Cup of Nations coming up in January. Leicester have four players that will go miss 10 games. That's massive. Just just time to turn this around. Um, but uh, but when it goes wrong. It's on the manager. Ultimately, it's on the manager. It's always on the manager. You, If it goes right, he gets a pat on the back. If we get promoted, we win the league this year and he goes up, people will be talking about building a statue to him in a couple of years' time. No, and that's the role no, no, you're no, in no, as a manager. No, 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 no. You get the you get, you get get the praise, the yeah. plaudits, when it goes well. When it doesn't go well, you pick the team. You set the strategy out. Did the strategy work uh, yesterday? Does anyone think did the strategy work? No. Yeah, it's, it's, your it's your missus. It's your missus called yeah. Jess. My missus called Jess. She is. The, oh, there she is. Hey, Jess. Oh, I love it. This what a comment. <laughs> yes, my uh, Are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's Fair big. Big. I'm big. Big. <laughs> I love that. I'm glad you did that because I had to stop him at some point. Jesse was sorry, going sorry, off on man. It's all not, right. Not Jess. Sorry. No, I, I, I think we, I think Hazard's right. We need a DAC. We just need a DAC all along. He's been. I, sa- I signed him in for the last to get off my chest. I, was <laughs> <a little> bit. <laughs> I love it. Um, Max, you've been sat there waiting patiently as always, mate. The polite, lovely guy that you are. Um, give me your opinion and and make us um make us all feel good again. The first Please. thing I want to do is just give Stoke a little bit of credit because I thought they actually started the, the first half. I think they played really well and they did exactly what they needed to do to combat us. Um, they pressed high. They stopped us playing out from the back, which is something we have struggled with, like um, the other guys have mentioned. But I think something that I want to talk about is um, the Gruev and Ampadu, really. In the first half, I think Gruev, because he was playing in that right central midfielder role, I, th- I feel like he maybe kind of thought that he had to get forward a little bit more than Ampadu because that's what Archie Gray does and that's what Glenn Kamara does. And when he did so, he left the midfield massively open and we were played through the midfield so many times in that first half and we were cut right through. I think in the second half, he settled in slightly more. But if you remember last week, um, we were talking about Ampadu and the fact that he wasn't able to spray balls around the pitch um, like Kenny McLean was for Norwich against us. And Ampadu in this game as well also was coming short, trying to receive the ball to feet from the defenders so that Leeds could play out from the back. And he wasn't able to get the ball forward. He had to go sideways and backwards nearly every single time, every time. because he doesn't have the options. And this again comes down to what the other the other guys have said that if Rutter is in the number ten role, he I think he drops deep and he comes and tries to get that ball and spin. I think Joel Pirro is not the player to do that. So when you're looking for Ethan Ampadu to pick up the ball and ping the ball a, a, a line breaking pass into the into the attacking third, Pirro is not the player you want to receive the ball in that situation. And I think that. Rutter is and if they are swapped around then he's the hold up man somebody said earlier in the chat um that Piro is no good at holding up the ball so how can he play up front but i think Rutter is the player that holds up the ball and he's the, he's he's the one that's got the capability to hold a man off good upper body strength spin and go and i think Ampadu and Strauk and Rodon are being stopped from playing out from the back as effectively as they would like to because they don't have options to play the ball to. If you have an actual number 10 who knows how to play that role properly, they will drop in and come and receive the ball and turn and go. Whereas Leeds weren't able to stretch the play. Just said we were, we were so compact in there that Ampadu would look up and the midfield was so packed, there's no way he's getting the ball through. So he had to yeah. turn around, give it back to Strout, give it back to Rodon. It made for a really boring and turgid game. And Leeds weren't able to move the ball quick enough. 
Very much. That's, yeah. that's the best. That's the best um, word to describe yesterday. Because I thought it was my yesterday. No, bored. Oh, bored. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the first bored. half, I was actually going, I'm actually bored watching it. I can't believe I'm saying this out loud, but I'm bored watching Leeds, Leeds yeah. game. We were boring in the first half. So, so the point is, it's it's easy, too easy, in my opinion, for another team to pack the midfield and press us and stop us playing out from the back effectively at all. And when Joe's saying that, um, who was it that said it? Um, Allardyce. When he said, if a team is pressing you high, you have to bypass the press. There's two ways to bypass a press. If you are the worst team in this situation and you are being pressed, the way to bypass the press is right over the top of them. But great teams and really good teams in their division are able to bypass the press by playing the ball through the lines. They see spaces in those lines and they ping the ball through hard and fast into a player's foot, feet and they're good enough to take it on. You see Man City do it. When a team come out and try and press Man City, they deal with it no problem because they just they just know how to play through a press. That's how we got picked apart against Man City when we were on the opposite end of things under Bielsa. When we played them, I was at that game at City away when we lost 7-0. We were trying to press them, but they just had so much quality. They would just go bang through the lines and we're gone. We've taken four men out of the game. Mm. We are supposedly, well, we should be able to do that to teams. When they come and press us, that should be what we're doing, given the quality difference in our side and the players that we have. But the way that they're set up at the moment, the midfield is so packed that we aren't able to move the ball quickly enough through there. And somebody who we really rely on to do that for us, Ethan Ampadu, doesn't even have the option to do that because he looks up and there is just a crowd of players ahead of him and no options. And I think, again, that comes down to somebody like Joel Perrault. He can't drop in because he's not that sort of player. And even if he does and receives the ball, he's not good enough to... Well, he's not that he's not good enough. It's not his game it's to back into set. a player and spin and, and hold the ball up. So, yeah, I, I think... We, we really struggle to, and, and Farker needs to find a fix for it. And, and that goes for all what we've said as well. People, I know no one's actually said anything, but it, it's easy for, for people to might, might be thinking, oh, well, we're all slating Farker and saying he's not a good enough manager. No, 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 no. We're just saying that we would like Farker to find a way to fix these things. And we think he's actually capable of it because he's a very good manager. But that's one of the things I, I thought is how, how much we struggle to play through the lines. But I did actually think that Stoke did well at that in the first half. So that, I have to give them their credit as well for, for the way they played. I do think, though, Max, to your point, and it is a really good point, there's a certain tempo that you need to play to pass the ball at to get out from a press like that. The ball has to be moving really, really quick. Your triangles have to be tight. Your your passing lanes have to be there. People have to be moving. If you look at Leeds in that first 45 minutes, it was way too slow moving the ball. There was too many touches yeah. on the ball, and there was little to no movement. That's part of the problem so as well, isn't it? Pass it if you can't do it. Yeah, exactly. You need both so those things what, to so click. Yeah, pass it's it. the whole thing, isn't it, that needs to that needs to change. It needs to be Pascal receives the ball. He looks up, bang, Ampadu's feet. Ampadu turns, bang, per, uh, oh, Brutter's gone. feet. And then we've got options. You've got wingers running off them, and it stretches the play as well. It makes them think twice about pressing as high up. It, it's just, yeah, moving that ball. It, it's the theme of the entire season, Joe, because you said it so early on in the season. We're struggling to move the ball quickly enough to have effective <laughs> counterattacks. Now we're struggling to move the ball quickly enough to break down, but yeah, to break through an opposition's press, even with a team like Stoke. And last, whilst I've given them their credit, they were 20th in the league last night yeah. before they played us. Yeah, exactly. They haven't had a great season. We should on paper, be able to play through them and we weren't able to. And that is a worrying sign. Yeah. No, I think that's good. I think, yeah, there's loads in there. And it's quite interesting you, you mentioned about Farker potentially resolving these issues because this was um, something that that he had issues with Pookie at Norwich as well. And, and towards the end of his time at Norwich before he was sacked, he was playing Pookie deeper. And Norwich fans couldn't, couldn't quite understand it. Um, I was on a stream earlier on and, and someone mentioned, so oh, it's quite interesting because that's what happened at Norwich. So um, I do wish you weren't as stubborn um, because I feel that that's, that's what it is. Word, isn't it? That's a strong yeah. word and I agree with, but, I, but I've written yeah. down stubborn. Yeah. I think he's stubborn in terms of, that's why I was really shocked at the lineup uh, because I didn't think he would change it. And the mad thing is the person he needed to change just... The two people he didn't change, Ampadu and Gruev, were the two that didn't get rested. And probably both, sorry, Ampadu and Gray were the two players that probably Gray, needed a break Gray and didn't get one. it. Gray was the yeah. one and didn't get it. And I thought yeah, Gray was okay yesterday. Joe, what you were saying about um, 
rewrite i know joe wasn't actually doing this but you were saying no we're not rewriting history about great Great. and and i think he he can play in that right back role but the idea the idea is that if you want him any if you if he's going to start the game you want him in central midfield don't you like if if he's going to be on the pitch you'd much rather him be in that central midfield role um because he's been the best in that in that right central midfield role kamara is getting better but I think yeah. we have to say Archie Gray has been the best in that position this season. And yeah. to it's the domino effect is the issue, isn't it? It because yeah. you play Gray at right back because you because you don't trust Ailing, for example. That mm. means you have to then bring in Gruev. He has his debut, struggles. Mm. And it's all it's that whole knock-on effect, isn't it? So if even if you just sacrifice the fact that Ailing plays at right back or Shackleton plays at right back and they're not the best right backs in the world, you get Gray in midfield and that I think mm-hmm. could be more important. Yeah, no, I I, I agree, and it, there's going to be lots to ponder. Um, we've already been going an hour and ten minutes. It's mad. There's loads more we could discuss, but I don't want to keep it too too long. Um, it's it's been a really great pod, but um, I think it's going to be interesting. I I hope I hope that the press will ask the right questions because I think they've been a bit soft, softly. Catchy monkey with um with Daniel Farker in the last uh, they have though I don't think they've they've really pressed down I think he needs to be asked again about the nine and ten I know he was asked not to but he needs to be um we need to talk about great um you know he's saying he's playing too much and then you continue to play him um you know uh, we need to we need to know what's going to change um because look I'm not I I really like Farker I think he's a great manager and all that sort of stuff. And we're in third, and I think those, you know, on another season, we're in the top two already. Um, but um, I think he needs to be getting more out of them. He does I need agree. to do get think, more out Do you think there's them. a reason why journalists don't ask tactical questions? Like, Probably because they don't know. Daniel, <laughs> it, it seems that Leeds, are really, re, Leeds really struggle when a team comes out and presses us and we struggle to play through them. How, how do you plan to fix this? Do you know what I mean? That... that, mm. that Questions like that never get answered. Never get asked. And do you know what? A manager would probably find a, 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 a what do you call it, a press conference, so much more interesting if somebody asked them questions yeah. like that rather than, oh, is this person back from injury? Is this person back from? I know they have yeah. to ask that for their paper or for what. You watch but... football for fun, Daniel. Like yeah. that was one of the questions I was asked last oh, week. Like, someone asking a real question, will you? Come on, you're journalists. Yeah. Let me get some super uh, no, chats in. Uh, um, I, I, I want to say, on. Max. Having been a journalist, probably they're not going to ask, ask those questions because no. they know they're going to get the same answer again. For example, on Euro and, so it's it's not it's not interesting in terms of uh, journalism, you know. But for the fans, it's really interesting instead because yeah. we want answers about that, you know. It's, My question yeah. for him about the Piro thing would be: with Joe Piro playing in the number nine, you're sacrificing missing a lot of other elements that you'd get from a number 10 in terms of dropping into midfield and being able to start moves, collecting the ball, transitions from midfield to attack and also backwards as well, finding gaps in behind for players to get in a creative player. You don't have that with Joe Perot. Yes, you've got a player who can get up and support and score goals, but you miss all the other elements by playing him there. So in the games when he doesn't score and like Stoke, you have a possibility where you could actually lose the game does it make more sense to not play Joel Perot in those situations and play a natural number 10? And mm. then maybe if it's if it's a case of a conversation around number nine, maybe it's Perot that comes on the nine later on in the game. Because it, for me, if you look at the thing is, and I keep saying it, if Pap, if, if Joe is, sorry, if, if Georgina Rutter can drop into a number 10 when Pat Bamford's on the pitch, I don't see why Joel Perot can't play a number nine. Yeah. I really don't understand it. And I think it's, yeah. it's it will be, and he, but he will say, oh, we've lost the game. And that's why you're asking this question because he he was very clever in the way he answered that question. He said, when he doesn't score, we'll ask why he's in the 10. But when he does score, we'll be dancing on tables. So he's he's he managed to answer that in a way where it makes it very hard for a journalist to ask that question again because unless you ask it after a massive win for Leeds, the, the answer will be, I did say this, I did say we'd ask this question when we lose a game or when he doesn't score, and here we are asking that question. So yeah. he'll make the journalist look a bit lesser of a journalist because of that. So <laughs> yeah, they have to be a bit clever with the question. I agree with Andre on that. Yeah, <laughs> you're probably right, mate. Well, um, come here, we'll, come here, we'll, we'll win on Saturday and we'll, we'll get a result next week and then everyone will think we're, um, we're um, you know, dog bollocks all right, again. Mate, stop no, I, I, yeah, I, a question I would like to... A question I would like to ask: We're edging towards November, you know, which which is which is always a crucial month 
and in the first half of the season is that um, do you think we can they don't both... get told what they can ask by the way either in the press they don't know I don't know where no. you get that from go on no uh, I will ask do, do you think there's a chance now that knowing what um, with this formation trying to change things a little bit with Gray and as right back uh, with the, the, the aforementioned you know number nine number ten there's a concrete chance to close the gap with Ipswich no one asked him again if there's if he believes we can close the gap with Ipswich, for example, I will ask him. You know, it's interesting in terms of journalism. You can get the headline: Parker uh, takes uh, uh, breaks the radar on on Ipswich. You know, uh, too too busy asking questions. You muted, Kit. You too busy. They're too busy asking questions, creating answers for the puff puff pieces. We That's need. They need to stop. They need to start winning. They need to stop losing matches. I should say, losing matches, stupid matches that they could have won. And that is the difference between Ipswich and Leicester and us. You know, they're it's not funny, throwing though, away chances. If you look at us before the international break, I was saying it's moving now. The ball's moving quickly. We're creating chances. You know, we're going to batter somebody at some point. We're going to take all these chances in the game. We're flying. Things are looking like they've come out with the last international break and we had a bit of a wobble against Southampton and then all of a sudden we went on a winning streak. And it feels like we've gone into international break this time and come back out of it in the exact same position that we went, came out of the last international break with a dodgy result and a bit of a wobble. And then we have to pick up, you know, and go, out, go on a winning streak again. Whereas we should be coming out of those international breaks better than we went into them because you've got time to work with a group of players, maybe less players, but those players who are not getting as many minutes should be getting more quality time and you should be getting more time to work. He talked about working on finishing scenarios. Two games outside of the... And I keep going back to the Norwich game because it was a group of players in, a, in situations that got us back into that game. Not a, It wasn't tactics, by the way. Putting six strikers on the pitch or putting six players up front, that's yeah, not tactics, it. lads. No one has ever put that on a tactics board. Made that's this called the kitchen sink. Thing. Oh, it's called the kid. It's, 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 it's a panic move for a reason. It's the ultra offensive mode on FIFA on, uh, when you put yeah. the ultra offensive yeah. and all, all the players out attack. Open. All out attack is what you're pressing. Exactly. And, that's, and most most coaches and managers just don't, that's not a that's not a backup plan. Yeah. You know, that's a case of we've got to get something out of this game. There, we're going to try to catch the same guy. But it, mm. but again, we. They, you then look at this one, this game again, and go, well, did we actually create enough chances? No, we didn't. And what did we do at the end of the game? We went three, five, or two. Three sub two six five again to try and get mm. something out of it, and we nearly did. Like Chris Somerville made a massive impact when he came on straight away. Yeah, that kid's confidence yeah. is through the roof right now. Of yeah. all the players, as I said, I've no issue with anybody coming out of that team last week. Or the rotation, the players that came in, I, I actually genuinely don't have a problem with the team that he picked because I can understand the reasons for every position that he's picked them. Mm -hmm. The issue I have is you don't take a player like Chris Somerville out of the team when he's in the, Ouch, when his yeah. confidence is as high as it is right now. You ride that wave as long as you can. Yeah, I think he was saying about having injections and that one in order to put just a bit of context on it. I think he's been struggling, but yeah, I hear it. I hear it. Um, you can also see, by the way, what, and I, I'm not trying to be a dick here, um, but you can see what we do get, what Dan James does bring to that team that we don't get from the other wingers, where it's, and as Andrea already pointed out and Max said it as well, there's no one running in behind. There's nobody trying to get into the no. space in behind. And James and Dan will do James that. Dan James did that as well. Uh, well, Nonto did it in the first half. But Nonto like tries to do it. Yeah. Yeah, Dan, yeah, is, yeah. Dan is far more direct with it. Like, it's not, I'm not going to yeah. take you on. I'm not going to try and drop that. I'm just going to run yeah. past you. You know, but um, it, it, it's not always great. It's not always pretty to look at. But as we've said this year, he's been effective this year without being brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. No, fair. Um, let me just finish up on some super chats. We've had a few coming out. I just nearly missed him if it were for PRM reminding me. Thank you. Sean Ely <laughs> says, Welcome home, Kate. Love your content. Thank you so um, much. You'll be back on the grind, Kate. Yeah. Back Monday. Monday. Monday, back on it. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, Justin Thomas, who's been a member for 13 months, says, love the show, Joe. Always ups and downs. Always. You're muted, Joe. Can't hear you, Joe. You can't hear you, mate. Thought it was me for a minute. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no, yeah, I saw you go like that, Andrea. No. <laughs> you, still, you still can't hear you, Joe. At least need no. a turn. You might there. need to leave and join again. Yeah, go on, Andrea. <laughs> with activity and someone to get a hold of a game that last night was crying out for a, a Pablo. Yeah. 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 And, and it's, it's as well. Yeah, it's yeah. like we said, before, like I said, I said before, you need somebody like that who's willing to drop in and receive the ball uh, so that we can play through the lines. And we, we just didn't <laughs> have that. So we just lacked creativity in so many ways. <laughs> yeah. 
exactly what was needed in that kind of game yesterday was somebody who could put their foot in the ball and actually start things moving, you know, calm it down a little bit when it needs to be calmed down, pop balls in behind. Um, and we don't we don't have that. And that's that's what I was saying about the lack of a number 10. When you are playing Piro in there, you're sacrificing that. You're missing out on that creative player. And we've got players who can do that outside of Rur, by the way. Like, um, I can't say his name, but Paveda's in that position, could play as a 10. You've got Somerville can play as a 10, you know. Yeah, no. Um, take advantage of this. So, yeah. <laughs> so we can slag anyway, it off. Like that. Like, it is it nice. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 th- I, think the, I think the ball of the penalty may be it, it, the, the network at Joe's house. No. Oh, thanks, Roy. <laughs> no. uh, Richard Pudges Richard is saying, we'll be okay. Calm down, everyone. MOT. Yeah. yeah. We'll still, be okay, but everything. I don't know. What, I think this, this is the sort... We, we, we'll be okay, but I think this is the sort of game where the reason that we're so upset about it is a because obviously the 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 fashion in which we lost it um with the penalty and stuff but also because like kate and i and multiple other people have said it's that thing of teams get through games where they're not playing well and they still win them um Mm. and we didn't do that and it kind of it kind of leads you towards thinking playoffs um, because we're yeah. not good enough, we're not bad enough to miss out on the playoffs. But no. I don't know if we're good enough. This sort of game makes you think. I don't know if we're yeah. good enough to get automatics. But it's a long season, so it remains to be seen. But there are certainly some issues that um, we would like Mr. Farker to address. I think yeah, the biggest to- issue is not necessarily us. If we're being, I think it's clouded <laughs> a little bit that it's us. But if if Leicester didn't start the way they started, and as Joe said at the very start of this, they have started this season with a record pace start to the championship. No team has ever picked up the amount of points in the amount of games that Leicester have at this point of a season. That's a record start. Ipswich are right behind them on that record and also the record for the most points of a promoted side mm-hmm. in this period of time. So they're they're just freak situations. Leicester have a bloody good squad and a, and a good manager and they're producing good, good work there. But if you take those two records, we're third. Like we're right there any other season. We're in the mix there, very much yeah. in the mix there. But this, it's just a weird season. So that's what it what would my, be, wouldn't it? Because we're in the mix, yeah. And and yeah. we we have, what eleven points behind? Probably? Twelve. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Honestly, I'm not concerned about uh, Ipswich dropping points because they will. I'm more mm. concerned about us picking points in certain games like Stoke and yeah. because our, our history this season so far has been against those teams. You know, that was Brom. Um, Cardiff yeah. on the open date of the season, Hull, Wednesday. when he didn't when, Wednesday, exactly Wednesday. Yeah. Oh my god, Wednesday! Uh, really, that game was uh really frustrating when he put Spence on in the last five minutes, yeah. Uh, yeah, also, at all, you know, we were talking about the situation at the interval, you know, uh, it didn't uh make subs back then, then the game changed after the red card, so we need to do better in those in those kind of games, you know. We, he we, is quite number... reactive with his substitutions. He's he's pretty reactive. Like he'll bring on loads of players when we're losing a game, or he'll change the system yeah. when we're losing a game, or if another team makes substitutions, then he'll make the changes. But he is very reactive. And if you if you're looking away until the 70th minute every single game to make your changes, and I know there's been a couple of exceptions, but in general, it's around that that time. If you're waiting till that time every single game. Other teams will have made changes before then. They'll make them on 55, yeah. 60 minute marks to change the game. If you're waiting, to, and also from a player's perspective, coming into a game in that stage, I'd much rather come into a game with 30, 35 minutes on the clock because it gives me a time, five, 10 minutes to get up to speed of the game. And then I've got 20 minutes still to go make an impact in the game. If I'm coming on for 15, 20 minutes, you're hoping I come on and hit the ground immediately. And that's not, and if you look at last night, that wasn't going to be an easy game to come on and make a massive impact in straight away. And, and I think, he needs to look at doing the changes a lot quicker. And I, I like, I, I, and again, I see the fact where he says to players, you know, if it's been bad for a staff. I like to give them 10, 15 minutes in the second half. Most managers that I, I would have played for, if, a, if it's a really bad for a staff and if it's a consistent thing, which it has been with Leeds, you get told you got five minutes, you got five minutes, fix yeah. it, up, making changes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, or you just make them a half time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, yeah. folks, thanks very much for tuning in and watching tonight. Yeah, thank you very much. It's been <laughs> Make sure you check out everybody's yeah. socials. They're all linked in the description down below. And like the <laughs> channel and pay your rent. And don't forget, Joe is just off 25,000 subscribers. Get on that as quick as you can. I'm 1,500 off 20K as well if you want to give me a dig out. 
that's all I'm gonna. I'm taking advantage. Good night, <laughs> God bless, and have a great weekend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>